Ian Castleberry, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me back, James. Yeah, anytime. So, who's a worse owner in pro sports than Daniel Snyder? Oh, man. James Dolan, maybe? Dolan's um, pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, He's up there. Certainly in the top five. Absolutely. Um, hmm. Hearing terrible I, things about Bidwell. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they got a whole scandal going on. Uh, is it John Fisher who owns the Oakland Athletics? Uh, I mean, that might be less his fault than the city of Oakland or the Alameda County, which is certainly what he's saying. But that team's in a total shambles right now. Well, they got a possum crawling around in the in the broadcast <laughs> booth. <laughs> And isn't it the whole state of California that won't build stadiums? They won't fund them? Yeah, yeah. That must be. I, yeah, I don't know. California not interested in uh, footing the bill for billionaire owners. Which is understandable. I think so. How many, um, yeah, how many do they need? Uh, it's too bad Oakland's going to lose another team. You know, they, they lost the Warriors to San Francisco. Now they're going to lose. Oh, they lost the Raiders, of course. To Las Vegas, and it sounds like the A's are going to follow him to Vegas. Or Salt Lake City, maybe. Salt Lake City, that was interesting, huh? Them as a possible expansion. Because that you always hear the same cities uh, when expansion or relocation comes up, right? Uh, you, Portland, um, Nashville has a, a, a big group ready. Uh, I know Raleigh and Charlotte for a long time. Mm -hmm. Austin has Texas has been in the bidding, but Salt Lake City, that's that's a good one. That's a new one. I have to read more up on that. I have to admit, but I think I like that. I, you know, whatever the feelings are about Salt Lake City, I mean, that's a, a region that isn't really represented in Major League Baseball. Um, it would be a natural uh, rival with the Mariners, perhaps. Um, Sure. That's that's a big city. Uh, or the know, Rockies. Maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe they uh, deserve more than just uh, the Utah Jazz there. Uh, that's, yeah, that's very intriguing. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how I feel about baseball expanding in general. I know that's kind of another topic, but it's always the worry that there's not enough pitching. But there probably is enough pitching now, especially with the way teams run their pitching staffs. You know, you don't have sure. – starters going uh you know they're not going to throw 200 innings a season anymore maybe they go five six innings you build sure. up these big bullpens so i think you can find enough guys who can throw 100 miles an hour for one inning uh to build up i i assume it's two more teams um but yeah salt lake city that is really intriguing all right, before we go back to the commanders i want to follow this down this baseball rabbit hole so uh I mean, of the cities you've heard about this this idea of possible expansions, uh, for those who who don't know, Salt Lake City, Gail Benson, not Gail, not Gail Benson, no, that that was the New Orleans um, Saints, Gail Miller, the oh, widow, right, right, right. the widow Larry of Miller, Larry right, Miller, yeah. who yeah. owned the Utah Jazz, is um, um, uh, heading a group with a couple former baseball players who are from the Utah area to hopefully bring Major League Baseball to Salt Lake City. Uh, and among um, a myriad of other rumors about expansions and, and of course, moving, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Ian, that uh, Oakland's been a long believed to move that move at some point. I mean, it's something mm -hmm. that Billy Bean has talked about forever. I think he's left the franchise at this point. But, but he talked about this like 15 years ago. Like it's been a a long process of whether we get an actual stadium somewhere in California or are we going to actually get the hell out of here? It sounds like, yeah. I mean, th there have been two to three stadium initiatives uh, in the Bay area um, that I can think of. Uh, the latest was, I think it's called the Howard terminal mm -hmm. um, out uh, on the Bay there. And that sounded like it was ready to go until like you said, the state of California and the people aren't interested in paying for it. Um, so without that, they, uh, you know, Las Vegas, I'm sure Major League Baseball wants to be in Las Vegas. Uh, the A's uh, would be a, a prime 
prime candidate. And they, they've had, you know, that stadium has just been a, a joke uh, throughout the game for so long. I mean, the, the what was it they had raw sewage building mm-hmm. up because the, 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 the pipes are, are flooded. Um, they've had a dead, dead mice in, in the vending machines. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, th- this uh, possum in, in the broadcast booth, I don't uh, there are seats that are literally um, unfit to be like they, they can't be used. Um, they, they have to be fixed or that they're either unusable or they have to be stuck together with duct tape. Uh, there's cracks everywhere. I mean, at some point it has to be a public safety issue, right? It's certainly public health if you have sewage coming out. Uh, into the stadium, but I just, I think Oakland and Rob Manford won't come right out and say it probably, but I think he wants his new shiny toy. I think he wants the sport to be in Las Vegas. Las Vegas has proven it can be a sports town now or a professional sports town with the Raiders. Um, You know, LeBron's talked about, he wants to be part of an NBA team there someday. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's going to happen. So if, if it's not the A's, would you rather a, a team relocate there or would you rather give them an expansion franchise? Um, I, I think you'd take care of two problems if you move A's to Las Vegas. And then expand to two other cities? Yeah, because well, then you get everything, right? Because then you still get those two cities. Um, and a massive expansion fee for both. A massive expansion fee. You get um, another thing about Salt Lake City. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the TV market situation is. That's such a big deal in baseball. Um, I don't know if the Mariners are part of that um, or the Rockies even uh, have that TV market, but I, I think that's something that, that could be negotiated if, you know, there, it's not like a situation like the Nationals and the Orioles sharing the same area or, you know, Iowa having rights to five different teams. So sure. five different teams are blacked out. I don't think you'd face those same issues. Um, <laughs> someday we'll, <laughs> We might have to devote a whole segment to the blackout issue in, in Major League Baseball and what a debacle that is. It is. It's one of the, the strangest arguments in, that any pro sports has, has made against its fans. It seems deliberately, almost punitively anti-fan. Absolutely. Uh, again, I mean, I brought up Iowa, you know, to, to have – five teams that you can't you know why why bother buying mlb tv unless you're a fan of like the dodgers or absolutely the yeah, Yankees. It, it, i mean you can't silly. see the nearby teams uh and i know there are other regions like that too maybe the first step of that is this you know with the uh with bally's being in a lot of trouble and having trouble or refusing to pay teams like the reds and the padres and the indians and the d-backs and if uh, major league baseball takes over the rights the broadcast rights to those teams and ends up streaming those teams. Uh, maybe that is the first step to, uh, to ending or at least somehow altering this, this blackout, these blackout restrictions. Yeah. I think blackout restrictions overall in sports should probably go away completely, especially with so much money with these leagues, depending so much on the money from these networks in order to prosper. I, I think it's it's unfair uh, to us all across the board. Uh, I I also find um, like a as a great example. I, I I live in Western New York. For those of you who who, who probably heard this before, but I I I, um, I watched the the Buffalo Sabers play, and I can't watch them on streaming, even though they are. Uh, it, if you're out of market, you can watch them on streaming. Uh, I can't watch them on ESPN Plus at all because we're blacked out. Are there are they a Bally's team too, or no? They're not a Bally's but... team. They're an MSG team. Oh, oh, oh okay. But which consider... is even worse because they want to charge us thirty bucks a month. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. No, that that's <laughs> also ridiculous. I mean, yes. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think the Bally's is charging what? I think twenty bucks. The which MSG is... is charging thirty bucks. Wow. Yeah. And I, I understand uh, Nesson in Boston is going in the 30 bucks a month oh. range as well. Oh, man. that <laughs> I, le- I mean, part of me thinks that the Boston fans will pay that, but 30 bucks. Yeah, it's excessive. I mean, 
I know. Do you say like, well, it's well, baseball, you're what you're talking about six months. Mm-hmm. Um, Bruins and, and Celtics. You're ta- well, I don't know. Are they on it? Any SN? Um, um, the Celtics are not. Oh, right. They're on um, the NBC sports NBC network. Boston. That's right. That's right. Uh, but I, I do believe the Bruins are obviously the, the, the Sox are. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah, but how do you? Yeah, the, I mean, <laughs> sometimes I wonder. I mean, was cable that bad? I mean, I, <laughs> I. Well, I'm saying this as somebody who is very strongly considering cutting the cord, um, and I don't. I mean, I, I, I watch. You know, my local baseball teams are the Atlanta Braves and strangely the Cincinnati Reds in Western North Carolina. Um, I wow. Mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange. Reds? I, yeah, I don't get the. Yeah, I have it's to. I, I cannot watch the Reds on MLB TV. They are on Bally's South East or something like that, or Bally's South. But aren't the Oreos and the Nationals closer? They are, um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that because of uh what, what what is their network that network is um well there's um there's um the maryland Masson. yeah yeah uh, maryland has Masson. one and yeah yeah masson and i'm assuming um the uh i'm guessing the 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 nats are on different on a different one I don't know for I, sure. Yeah, I can't remember because that was a big issue for a long time is that they they were on Masson, the Nats, but they weren't, despite being so much more successful a team, they weren't getting that much money because that was the um, arrangement that the Nats made uh, when they moved into into that market. And Peter Angelos, the Orioles owner, just said, you know, he, like, that was the big holdup toward the, toward the Nats moving there, I think. So they, they just – the Nats had, were forced to take this punitive um, offer or the, this rights deal, which they get very little money. Um, yeah, you're right. Though I, yeah, I should be in the in the Orioles and, and Nats market as well. Um, maybe just because we don't get massing on our cable system. But anyway, um, yeah, I do wonder. <laughs> I wonder if having cable was was so bad. I, but again, I say that knowing that. You know, people who get YouTube TV or Hulu are probably saving half or paying half of, of what they did with cable, depending on what yeah what cable I, package you get. Yeah, depending on what package you had. I, I guess I, I, I'm mixed on it. I I've just recently cut the cord. Oh, okay. Um, um when we moved into this place from my from my old apartment, I had a deal where where I got super high speed internet. And and cable, so I like I, I I had cable, and it's been difficult at at moments. You know, sometimes I miss my sports center. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, um, working around. That's what it. I wonder. You know, would I miss? I don't know. I mean, I've I've been, I've been that cable watcher where I'm just flipping around, and it's for some reason that. I think this really got worse with COVID, but like I, I'm always on TNT or TBS or FX. Like, what Marvel movie is on tonight? Even though sure. I've seen seen them however many times, um, so I guess I won't entirely get that channel surfing uh, if I cut the cord. But yeah, I, I mean, I, go, I think it's channel. I think it's channel surfing of a different type. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, um, I mean, yeah, do you like sign on to Netflix or, or HBO Max and that's your surfing? Like what? Es- essentially, yeah. I mean, yeah. or um, like I have the Disney bundle. Okay. Yep. So I, you know, I, I, I'll tune into Hulu and Hulu's hooked up into ESPN Plus and all the Hulu. So I'm like, I'm flipping through what, what games are being live streamed on 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 uh, on ESPN plus there plus Except movies the documentaries all that then you have things like Pluto TV oh yeah I don't, uh, where you you are literally just going through channels like a zillion channels and um 
And then you have, of course, Netflix and HBO Max, which are, you know, similar in that you are just going through you, what documentary do you want to watch? What, right. what, uh, what show do you want to rewatch? That kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm mostly an HBO Max and Disney Plus watcher right now. Um, maybe that'll change a little bit depending on the time of year and, and and whatnot. But yeah, for sports fans, it, cable still seems like the way to go. It's a good deal. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't begrudge anybody who you know wants to pay seventy five dollars instead of two hundred dollars. Well, the problem with it was that it was a good deal for us as sports fans, but it was a bad deal for everybody else. Mm, yeah, yeah. The fact that, yeah. that that the average cable user is spending $9 a month on ESPN, even though right. on its highest rated night, it'll get non-football night. It'll get maybe a million viewers. Yeah. Which is just, it just, that's patently unfair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The people who don't watch sports. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're paying, like you said, they're paying for ESPN. They're paying for MLB network, NFL network, et cetera. Sure. Uh, the regional sports networks. And I mean, that's, that's where these networks get their money from. That's where they can get so many billions from that. They, they can't get the same, uh, rights fees or service fees, carriage fees from from ca- from streaming that they can from cable, uh, which you're seeing. I mean, that's going to be a problem with you know, like we talked about with Major League Baseball and some of these teams. If say the Reds decide they don't want to be in Bally's anymore, and and Major League Baseball takes that over, uh, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but what if the Reds are getting fifty million dollars a year Quite from Bally's? And yeah. then where does that money come from? They're not going to get $50 million from people signing up for streaming. Yep. Not at all. So, I mean, does that create even more of a disparity between say the Yankees and the A's or the Reds? Um, it certainly could. Quite likely. And and yeah. I, I, I expect it. And I, I think it'll probably lead eventually to labor trouble. Yeah. Yep. And another hard strike. Which, At least down the line. Man, oh man. Yeah. I mean, I, I know baseball just got done with another labor stoppage. That's the last thing people want to hear. Yeah. Well, to pivot to the Redskins, I can't <laughs> stop calling them the Redskins. It's just, I can't stop the Redskins slash commanders. You're commandeering this uh, discussion to another topic. Oh, yeah. I'm commandeering. It's uh, hail to the commanders. (laughs) Do you like that name, by the way? It's terrible. (laughs) It's it's too it's it's just too much. It's too long a word, I think. Yeah, it's too long a word. It's like an XFL name or a video game name. I mean, what does it really say? Does it? I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about Redskins, but but um, you also can't shorten it, right? Any, like you can't. What are you going to call them? The commies? That doesn't work. The comms. Yeah, I get. I get wanting to re to rebrand. You know, with all the controversy, I understand. But I, I think that was just a poor choice, and that speaks to why Snyder was probably the worst owner in sports. Uh, And, well, he still is. Still is for at least, yeah, however many months, maybe. It sounds like this is going to happen. Do you believe Um, it? I guess not until it actually happens. I guess I'm in that uh, frame of mind. But, you know, you got the Washington Post running these articles saying, um, you know, the Josh Harris ownership group uh, seems to have just about everything in line. They got to take care of a couple of things as far as um, where their revenues are coming from or uh, do they have. I mean, there's all all these sorts of regulations like uh, 
you, you know, there, there has to no more than 25 people can be in an ownership group or mm -hmm. uh, the, the majority owner has to have at least 30 percent, I think, controlling interest. Um, I might be I getting think, those mixed up. But. I think more than that in the NFL, if I'm remembering correctly. OK. Uh, in, in the NBA, it's 30 percent. Uh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, um, I think both their, your rules are in the are both NBA rules, and in the NFL they like having one star, one one new member of the club. Yeah, yep. They're pretty strict about it. Uh, and in the NBA, they, they, there's a uh, you usually have a zillion people who own a small percentage of each team. And you have uh, a top dog who sort of uh, has at least 30%, who's the, the the majority owner. Okay. Now, apparently, the, the pro I mean, Josh Harris, what, he also owns the Sixers and the New mm -hmm. Jersey Devils. Yes. Apparently, that's not a problem. Um, Should it be? He no, I don't, I don't see – I don't see why, especially if they're not in the, the same – city mm -hmm. um I, don't, I mean ted leonsis could have owned the could have bought the commanders right and he owns the yep. uh the capitals and the the wizards so i mean i'm mm -hmm. sure that's a bridge uh the nfl was willing to cross uh, do, what do you think do you think multi-team ownership should be allowed i also i i've been a fandom that has a multi-team owner uh, oh that's right uh, that's right terry pagula owns the sabers and bills I part of me doesn't like it. Like I, I think that I think Mike Illich was the perfect example of this in Detroit, mm -hmm. where he would pour his money into the Detroit Red Wings, and every once in a while look at the Tigers, and then it switched. Yeah. yeah. So like, I, I think you end up with a level of favoritism. Mm -hmm. I think in some level in the Buffalo world, Terry Pagula was believed to be more of a Sabres fan than a Bills fan. But the Bills have had better management over the last half decade, at least, uh, than, than the Sabres have. And, of course, it's more of a moneymaker because it's football instead of hockey. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, so, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Detroit's facing something similar right now. I mean, it, Mike Gillis passing away and his son taking over ownership of the Red Wings and Tigers. And he doesn't appear to be interested in spending money on either team. Really? Um, the Red Wings had a little bit of a um, spending spree in free agency, but they also just like almost had a fire sale at the trade deadline. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, what happens when you're not spending money on either one? I, 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 that maybe that further underlines the problem that you were mentioning. My my inclination is to have one very interested owner. Mm -hmm. So the NFL model where you have to have a, a majority owner where it's one person or, or a couple. Um, you, it can't be a company like, you know, Maple Leafs Sports and Entertainment who owns the, the Maple Leafs and the, the Toronto Raptors. Right, right. Um, fact, I think the NFL actually, yeah, the NFL doesn't like that or doesn't want that. Right? Yeah, they don't allow it. They don't allow it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's always a person. So, like, uh, they wouldn't allow Walmart to buy the Broncos. They just would allow a couple guys from Walmart to buy the Broncos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and also on the, on the also multi-team ownership, uh, another great example of this was the Seahawks and the Trailblazers were both owned by Paul Allen. Oh, Paul Allen owned both, right? Yeah, and Paul Allen poured money into the Trailblazers for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I I can't claim he was a bad owner. I mean, they, they did. He did when he took over the team. The, the both teams did turn around for the most part. I mean, the Seahawks made the Super Bowl a few times, both on with Mike Holmgren and then later Pete Carroll. Mm -hmm. And the Trailblazers were they were good in the around the turn of the century, and have been just okay since. 
Yeah, they've been that, one of those, what are the 40, 50, they're in that NBA purgatory where they, they make the playoffs, but aren't really a championship contender. I mean, they're certainly not what they were, what, in the early 90s, mid 90s with the, the Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter, Jerome Kersey teams. Sure, sure. Yeah. Those are great teams too. Oh, and Clyde, I, I think is one of the most underrated players in NBA history. Honestly, absolutely. He, was, he was in the league at the wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. And then Michael Jordan, yeah. Made sure he stayed that way. Without uh, a doubt. In the, what was that? The 93 finals? 94? Uh, 92? 92. Okay. I think 92 because uh, 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 91 were, was the Lakers in Bulls. That's right. That's right. Okay. That was the second one. And then, of course, it was Barkley versus Jordan in the third and his third title win. That was yeah okay. Yeah, right, that sounds right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, people listen to know this. You know, is Drexler as good as Jordan? And Jordan heard all that, and as everybody who watched the Last Dance knows, he took that personally. Of course. And yeah, and you had the classic Jordan running down the court shrugging. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was right. uh, uh, the shrug. Dress, Drexler, I think there was a little bit of a reminder of that uh, during the NCAA tournament this year, that uh, just how good those Houston teams were and they run highlights of that amazing dunk Drexler had against uh, – oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't remember. Almost died there. Oh, no. <laughs> James is recovering, folks, if you don't know. Absolutely. I I I've had a terrible, terrible like head cold. Oof. And it's just been finally over the last two days, my like my lungs feel like lighter. Oh man, that's awful. And I'm I'm only coughing small jags here or there. Ugh. You have allergies too, or no? Oh yeah, terrible allergies. Ah, uh, there you go. Mm. Uh, pollen is terrible, terrible for me. Yeah, I think it's worse here in North Carolina, or at least it seems to be ever since I moved here. Been here twelve years, and I, yeah, I don't remember ever complaining about allergies uh, until I moved here. What's the temperature down there? It was eighty degrees today. Wow. Um, but we've been kind of, we, over the weekend, it was in the sixties last two days, it's in the seventies and then spiking. And I think it's going to go, going to go back down. And I think we might have a couple of days of eighties. Um, nice. but it's, yeah, it's nice here. I, I, I can't, can't complain. I, I'm, I'm jealous. I am. I'm, we are, we are in the fifties. Uh, we did touch 70 a couple of days ago, but, but we're in the fifties up here. Oh, 70s in April in a place like Buffalo or back. I'm from Michigan, so yeah, those days were always fantastic. Although you put a little bit of pressure on yourself, right? You think like, oh, I got to go out and do something mm -hmm. because you don't know if you're that, – I guess that's one difference living down here is that, you know, when you have that first nice day, like I still have that Michigan mentality like, oh, I got to go out and do something. I got to take advantage of that and then – um. I forget my, my friend, Mike McClary, who lives in Arizona, he kind of talked me out of that. He's like, you know, you live in a place that has nicer weather. Now you're going to have other nice days. Um, <laughs> you can, you could take it easy. Yeah. I think there is this pressure. Uh, I, I, I certainly, and I, I, you, you know, when you, you see it the most and you're from your Michigan days, I'm assuming you've, you've had a similar experience. It is January. Usually, like late January, and you have the rare sixty degree day. Oh yes, and it looks like the Fourth of July. Like everybody's out, dudes in shorts. <laughs> it's like, you know, like it, it's it's like it is a ninety degree day. Like shorts and sixty degree weather is my favorite. Yeah, people are just all into it. It changes your, 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 like, it's something about being in the deprivation 
of winter and then just emerging into this like this warmth that's just like oh but you just hope somebody doesn't say oh i wonder if this means winter's over because you know it's not next week yep (laughs) the next day (laughs) yeah sometimes you just get slapped in the face with just like oh Uh, here's six inches of snow shoveling time Should we uh, move on to Draymond? Okay, yeah. We're going to Draymond well, Green. Well, would you like to set this one up or should I? Um. Yeah, so Draymond Green, uh, he got suspended. He'll be suspended for game three um, after uh, the incident in game two where he stomped on Demontis Sabonis' chest. Um, and I think well, it also caused kind of a scene after he was ejected, right? Like uh, um, taunting the fans and um, not exactly leaving the court quietly. Um, but there's some controversy as to whether or not Green should have been suspended. And then uh, the person in charge of discipline for the NBA saying, well, this is more of a case of Dem- Draymond Green is a repeat offender this is a pattern with him. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you're right. Uh, many people uh, willing to point out that Joe Dumars was part of the bad boys, Detroit Pistons, and maybe shouldn't be the person having a say on, uh, on, whether or not someone should be suspended for uh, their on-court antics. Um, I don't have a problem with the suspension. Uh, How do you feel? Okay. So, so are we, are we going with the letter of the law or the spirit of the law? Hmm. I get, well, uh, that's a great question. Uh, Let's say spirit of the law since it's the playoffs. Spirit of the law, he's got to be suspended. Yeah. Letter of law, no. Ah, okay. Because it's clear to do. It's clear. Sabotis was holding it, held his leg. Yes, yes. And right and, before that, if you he dragged down Clay Thompson on a mm-hmm. rebound and fell to the ground, and that's when he reached out to grab Draymond's leg, but. I mean, Draymond could have just, I don't know, could have not tried so vigorously to shake himself free or to demonstrably stomp on his chest. I don't know. Um, Is it because this is the playoffs that that they they made that decision, you think? I think it's because it's Draymond. Yeah, yeah. Draymond's got a history. Uh, Draymond... Punched, uh, did he, who did you punch in the balls? Steven Adams, yes, is that right? And and then, uh, there was a LeBron incident in the finals, yep, yep, kicked out and, with his, yeah, and he's known for being demonstrative and 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 collecting technicals. And you know, I it, it's it's one of those things where it's like there are if the rules were doled out equally. Just by the moment we saw, mm-hmm. it, you don't suspend them. You maybe you find them, but do you, think, you don't suspend. Do you think there's more outrage over him being suspended because the Warriors are down 0-2 uh, against the Kings and losing Draymond for Game Three might? Well, I don't know if it ensures they lose Game Three, but it certainly doesn't help. If the Warriors had a 2-0 lead or if this series was tied 1-1, um, would people feel differently about that, do you think? I think so. Yeah. I think Yeah, that um, seemed to be Stephen A. Smith's uh, argument on, on first take was that, one, this is the playoffs, should have let that go. Two, this could uh, end up really affecting the outcome of the series, um, which is possible. And the outcome of a dynasty. 
I'll come in with Dynasty. But I also think that's somewhat taken away from how well the Kings are playing. Oh, it absolutely is. Yeah. I mean, they have no answer for uh, De'Aaron Fox, who, I mean, I don't know how many people watch the Kings this season. I mean, maybe if you were keeping an eye on the NBA, you see, wow, Sacramento is really good. Uh, but you're right. Yeah, this is yeah, – we should probably talk about that. I mean, this very well could be the end of the Warriors dynasty. And the the flagship team for the last, what, eight years? Yeah. Nine yeah. years? Yeah. And yeah, if, if, and people are probably just starting to tune in maybe for the playoffs if you're more of a casual fan. You know, the first round kind of sneaks up on you, and then, well, what? Oh, the Warriors aren't playing? Uh-oh. Yeah. Do I keep watching? Yeah. I don't know anybody on the Sacramento Kings. I, I mean, I'm not excusing that, but I think that's – kind of how the casual fan might think. Well, I think the, I think it's not just that. I think it's not just how the casual fan thinks. So let, let's talk about the pundit tocracy. <laughs> okay. For a moment. I think it's how they think. I think yeah. the Warriors are way more interesting than the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's much more interesting uh, among the punditocracy uh, on daytime TV, debate TV, to talk about the Warriors and rather than uh, the Kings. Um, let's say I should get the NBA playoff bracket in front of me, who they would play. Um, but yeah, that's we. You know, people say they're they're sick of seeing the same teams over and over, but I mean, ultimately, fans and media. Love dynasties. You love the familiar faces. You want to see Steph Curry and Clay and Draymond, uh, for better or for worse. You you like familiarity. I mean, new is good, is fun, but I mean, geez, look, how much is a different sport? But how much did the Final Four suffer because we didn't have Duke or Kentucky or North Carolina or even Louisville or somebody like that? in the final four and in the NBA, we want, we're used to seeing the golden state warriors in the playoffs, maybe not in the finals, but um, usually in the finals, as you said, over the past eight years, and then all of a sudden they're gone, especially for a team that most people don't know anything about that hadn't been in the playoffs for what was it? 17 years. Yes. Before that, it's an adjustment, especially again, if you're approaching this, as a casual fan. And thinking about that punditocracy in these media organizations, it's the casual fans that fill up the ratings books. So they want LeBron and the Warriors to clash at some point. If the Warriors are out of pocket, which it it looks likely at this point, I mean, they've looked, I didn't think they've looked terrible in each game. I thought they they looked they looked vulnerable is 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 uh it's probably a good good phrase for it. And they were in a bad matchup. I mean it just seemed I think it'll yeah. go it'll be a long series for sure. But like uh it just looked like they were in a bad matchup. So if and, they lose game three, oof. Oh, if they lose game three, I think it's 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 a wrap, probably done in five. So looking at the uh, NBA playoff bracket, if the Warriors lose, we very well would be deprived of a Warriors-Lakers second-round series. And Uh, if you're ESPN, if you're TNT, if you're uh, NBA Twitter, if you're any NBA writer, you are begging for that matchup. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be so much fun. I mean, yeah, right. I mean, even if... I mean, there is some familiarity with the Grizzlies. If the Grizzlies were to advance past Mm -hmm. the Lakers, although um, as we're recording tonight, uh, John Morant's not going to play in game two um, plus because of his injury, which is another problem in these playoffs, by the way, is stars getting injured. Sure, sure. Um, But yeah, yeah, to not have Lakers Warriors in that second round, especially when the uh, the other matchup in in the West could be what nuggets and I mean, Suns Clippers is a great first round matchup. Sure. Um, but you know, does nuggets Suns or nuggets Clippers 
nothing against the T-Wolves, but um, that, that certainly doesn't attract the same interest that Warriors Lakers would. Or, or Warriors Grizzlies even. I mean, just the uh, Ja, yes, is, is hurt at the moment. But Ja, I, I, there are stars in the NBA, and then there are stars. And Ja is, seems like he is one of those guys that are on that next boat of young stars in the league. De'Aaron Fox and uh, everyone from the, from the, the Kings at least aren't there yet. Maybe they get there this year. Maybe De'Aaron Fox yeah. is. Maybe this is his, his coming out party. Yeah, sometimes I mean, yeah, sometimes that happens, right? The the team comes out of nowhere, and we kind of saw that in the bubble a few years ago. Even though the Lakers eventually won it, I mean, it was the Nuggets who kind of mm-hmm. emerged as this team, and they've taken a step back. But yeah, the you know we were saying how we don't always like seeing new teams, but the Grizzlies are a great example of a newer team with an up-and-coming star, as you mentioned, an emerging star, who I think is starting to become familiar with um, – cer- certainly they're familiar with NBA fans, but like the – I keep mentioning the casual fan or the mainstream uh, fan that that's checking in. I, I think the Grizzlies are an example of, yes, a newer team that is ready to emerge and I think would attract um, – would create a great matchup, like you said, with the Warriors. But yeah, I mean, if you have a De'Aaron Fox versus John Morant, if if it worked out that way, I think that could be really good for the sport too, especially if it was a longer series. On Ja for a moment, uh, as uh, sports fans are aware of, but I'll, I'll summarize it quickly. He got in some major trouble a couple of months ago. He, uh, he was brandishing a firearm on Instagram Live. Uh, in a club, and among other other problems, do you think that's hurt his star or helped, or both? Ooh, uh, it certainly helped his notoriety, his his profile. But um, yeah, I don't know if that's helped his his stardom. Um, if if you're saying that's not the type of thing. You want to be associated with uh, top stars in the game. I mean, obviously, just very, very poor judgment by John ja Morant, and you know we what the reaction was to it um, uh, can can be another subject. But uh, yeah, I think I think it's raised his profile for better or for worse. Though, how do you see it? I want to parse the notoriety versus stardom. I'm mm-hmm. not sure that those are as different as you pose mm-hmm. them. I, when I think of a star, a star isn't necessarily a, a positive thing. It's sort of essentially just a high level of notoriety. I mean, at least that's how I look at it. Is that how you look at it? How do you look at it? I guess, yeah, I don't know if this is the same thing. I, I always, I like to apply what I call the mom test to okay. if my mother has heard about you, heard of you, you're a star. Okay. And my mom has heard of John Morant because of this off the court stuff, not because, you know, he's an amazing dunker and, and a budding superstar. Okay. Um, so I guess that, yeah, that's, that's the line I would draw between notoriety and stardom. Um, is why is John ja Morant? Why does my mother know who John ja Morant is? Okay, how how many actual stars are in the NBA? Yeah, um, LeBron, LeBron, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. Oh, Kevin Durant. Do we put Donovan Mitchell in that category? I don't know if no. we do. No. Um, no, not a chance. So is that it? Three. Or are we forgetting? Um, I don't think Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown are in that. Not yet. Um, Clay Thompson. Giannis. 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 Um, Your mom would know Giannis. <laughs> yeah, maybe. 
because of that Disney Plus movie. Uh, <laughs> no, I think she knows. She uh, yeah, I mean, Jokic isn't really yeah in that category. Um, Joel yeah. Embiid. Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I would say no. I mean, compared to, I mean, if you're if you're comparing him to LeBron, Steph, and 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 Kevin Durant. Um, I don't know. Does Embiid belong? I mean, obviously he's a star, but is he? Well, is notoriety. Or are yeah, they different? Like you were yeah, saying, maybe. Yeah, I think they're different. I, yeah. I, 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 um, I, I think he he doesn't have the. I don't know that he's in the gin pop. Like I don't think my mom would know him. I think my mom would know those other other four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm struggling to think. Yeah. Of I mean, a, is that just because they, they've done this for so long that they're just part of the the fabric, part of the cultural wallpaper? Or I mean, that's part of it. Sure. Part of it is commercials, of course. You know, for sure. Um. Although Joel Embiid has, I mean, I maybe I'm wrong about this. I would argue Embiid has more commercials than Kevin Durant. But, but Durant's been in the in the league much longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's also been to the height of the league. He, he has the association with the Warriors, and even those those Thunder teams were shockingly well remembered. And and sort of uh, front and center uh, in a way that Embiid isn't quite yet. I would argue. Yeah. And I don't know. Does it also matter that Curry and Durant had standout college careers, so people knew who they were before? Um, I know Durant for Curry, was left more early, for but... more for Curry than Durant. Yeah. Okay. I think Durant. I mean, Texas didn't go far in the in the, um, in the NCAA tournament, but I do remember him clearly from yeah, Texas. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, and it, it comes up every time Tennessee loses, right? The very oh, Rick Barnes. He had Kevin Durant, and he couldn't win with him. So how's he sure. going to win with Tennessee? Sure. I don't think. Yeah. So is that that's. I think that's, that's the list. Bad, right? That Trey well, Young. We, there's another guy we didn't mention, but mm-mm. no, yeah, Luca. I agree. So maybe Luca? three guys, maybe Luca? four. Luca. Ooh, Kyrie Irving. Oh, definitely Kyrie. Definitely uh, notoriety. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's he's definitely. I think he's a star. I think he w- would have to be on the list. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's got the mix of both. Yeah, yeah. So so I, I guess, I mean, let's explore this a bit more. We have stardom well, and we have yeah. notoriety. Yeah. like Right. So to go back to the mom test, mom knows who Kyrie Irving is because of the anti-Semitic remarks, probably. I mean, I mean, I could come in and if she brings him up, and it's, you know, he's a fantastic basketball player, mom, you know, whatever people are saying about him. I mean, there's a reason – people talk about him that much because he's really, really good. And he played with LeBron and famously wanted to get away from LeBron and is kind of seems like steadily um, affected his career by wanting, wanting to move. Yeah. I, yeah, you're right. Kyrie, Kyrie should maybe be on that list. Although maybe would he be fifth? Yeah, yeah. Because he hasn't. I mean, he maybe you put Durant in this category too, but Kyrie's been very disappointing in terms of. I mean, he's a spectacular player, mm-hmm. but did he elevate the Celtics? Did he elevate the the Nets? He's it appears to have hurt the Mavericks mm-hmm. this season too. So. I mean, that definitely has him a rung below. Yeah, like you said, fifth. Luca is a really good question because he's he is a star, right? I mean, he's a one name. Mm-hmm. 
Madonna, Cher, whatever, Luca. Um, and he's so fun to watch. But, yeah, I don't know. He hasn't broken through maybe to that um, ascendant stardom. I keep – I want to – I don't want to keep saying the mom test. Mom doesn't know who uh, Luka Doncic is, but she should. I'll, I'll do what I can to educate her. And he also has one quality that we have not mentioned. He's uh, white. He's white. I was going to say, is it one that he shares with <laughs> Nikola, <laughs> Nikola right. Jokic? Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I, mean, I mean, I think... I do think in some ways that helps him in terms of, uh, of his star power potential um, in, in terms of where his ceiling is. Mm-hmm. I, I would agree. He's not quite there yet. I, I, a deep playoff run. If he, if he carries the Mavericks to the finals, like I, I, I could see him just exploding in a way that, yeah, that we we haven't seen anyone explode in since Steph Curry. Yeah, and the you know the race question is is a really good one because it's come up in this MVP race, right? But mm-hmm. um, notably on know. TV a lot. Yeah, on TV Kendrick a lot. Martin. He's definitely a face. You know, there's a reason the Mavericks get these national TV games, or they play on Christmas because of one guy they're going to show. So. That uh, yeah, and like you said, he he is one. He in one way he is not like the others. Yeah, one of these things is not <laughs> like the others. One of these things <laughs> just doesn't belong. Uh, but um, um but uh, yeah, I, I think I think we have a a short list of four or five just true blue stars, and then maybe a list of ten. Quite possible maybes and guys who may have missed their their shot. Hmm. You know, this is making me think. I don't know if we want to go this way let, or, or let, move let, on, but let, let's keep going. Like, I mean, I, I assume we both kind of grew up in the NBA in the eighties, and um, were there more stars then? I mean, guys like, uh, you know, you would put in posters on your room. I mean, Dominique Wilkins. Because uh, Dominique Wilkins is kind of like w- one of those players we're talking about, right? Like, he wasn't Bird, Magic, Jordan. Maybe he was a fifth or sixth guy. Um, Were there more? I, yeah, I, probably so, not. So, if we're talking 80s? Yeah. Okay, so I think... You had Magic and 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 Larry, mm-hmm. right in their own their own category. Michael just below them. Mm-hmm. Probably Kareem late stage in okay. that group as well. Yep, yep. Young Barkley, probably a step below. Mm-hmm. Young Ewing a step below. I'm trying to think of people people who would have been in that upper echelon. I mean, the Dr. J was sort toward the end of his career at that point. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas. Um, I don't know. Was No, I don't think the Mark Aguirre or any no, of those no, Mavericks no. were. Not quite. No. Um, yeah, I don't... My, my gut, it says that uh, there aren't more... There were not more stars in the eighties or nineties. Okay, I mean, and that's like a weird question too, because obviously I am not the sort of fan who goes to anymore, who you know goes to Foot Locker or the record store or whatever, mm-hmm. and thinks it would be really. I, I want this poster of Dominique Wilkins on my wall because sure. that's such a great poster dunk. Um, right. Yeah, it's probably yeah, it's probably probably similar, isn't it? Because if I if I go and I look at the the nineties, so you had Michael, who who ascended, you know, with a bullet, yep. no one close, and then you had this group of maybe four or five other guys, Patrick yeah. Ewing, 
Hakeem yeah, Olajuwon. Yep. Yeah, for mention Clyde Drexler. Clyde Drexler. Do we still um, put Barkley in that group? Yeah. Yeah, in the in the nineties, sure. At least for half the decade. And, hmm. and and you could argue that his his star grew as he headed toward retirement. Yeah. Reggie even Miller, before he got the TV. Reggie Miller would be would be whether he's in that group or he's at least close. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, played for championships. So yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah. uh, Sean Kemp was a giant oh, star. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, um, and you know, uh, you know, even you know, David toward Robinson. the end of the is that yeah, nineties, oh, yeah. Oh, big dog. Oh, Glenn, uh, Glenn Rose. Yeah, Glenn oh, you Robinson. mean David Robinson? David Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, David Robinson's an interesting character because I don't know that I I call him a star. He was one, certainly one of the greatest ever, but like. I wouldn't call him a star. Hmm. No, nah, I think you're right. I mean, I just, I remember when he first came into the league and the highlights were unbelievable, but you're right. You're right. And of course he did not ascend, uh, become a championship player until Tim Duncan came along. Sure. Um, oh, no, we, we left out Shaq. Shaq. Oh, Shaq's mad. And then in early stage, Kobe. Somebody. Yep. And yeah. then if you get into the 2000s, it's Shaq. It's prime Kobe. Tim Duncan's kind of in that David Robinson mm-hmm. category. Even though he was a champion, he's won, I think, was it five rings? Yeah. Four or five rings. Yeah. But, but like, he just, he was not, he didn't have what Sean Kemp had at one point um, or what Vince Carter had at one point or gosh. Tracy McGrady. I don't know. Like yeah, the 2000s, that may have been... Maybe they had two of the brightest stars, but did they have the depth in the 2000s? I don't think I'm they really had having trouble thinking of I mean, it, else. It, was, it was LeBron. Okay, yeah, LeBron. Young LeBron. Yeah, and LeBron watching him. Um, and, I mean, remember the... the uh, oh, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade emerged toward the middle of the, of the decade. Yep. You had uh, Jason Kidd toward the end. Ah, uh, yep. It, it like I think that, I think we we're, we're see I think in in most sports there's a similar hierarchy where there is one guy or a small group of guys, especially in the NBA. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we talked about the NFL, we'd probably have a really similar discussion, right? Uh, yeah, I think Holmes, Allen. I mean, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. Rodgers and Brady, I mean, just on name value, but not. Yeah. They're a rung below now. No, yeah, yeah, you're right. Very similar. And then even Herbert, as great as Herbert has been so far, mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. kind of a little far to the back. Maybe because it's just not as exciting to watch as uh, Mahomes or an Allen or even Joe Burrow. Yeah. And Could probably Jalen Hurts. Yeah. He, he's, he could crack it. I think he's got to do it for more than one year. Right, right. Yeah, he has to put together like a two, three year run at least. What do you think of that contract, though? He got oh. the largest deal in the history of the NFL. I Most guaranteed don't. money. Man, I do not. After, like you said, it's really just been one emergent season. I mean, it, there was kind of a question as to whether or not the Eagles wanted to go with Hertz, right? And there what yep. there have been rumblings that's what cost Doug Peterson his job, maybe mm-hmm. with the Eagles. Um I will say though, other than Mahomes and Allen, I think Hertz I mean he doesn't have the star power yet of those other two, but if to me, if you talk about the quarterbacks who are potentially the most unstoppable in terms of they can get it done with their arm, but if you cover all the receivers, they can run and get first downs that way and kill a defense. I mean, I think Hertz Hertz is really good in that in that category. He might even be better than Mahomes now. I mean, I might be in terms of that type of quarterback, it might be Allen and Hertz. Um, but wow, I would not have foreseen him getting a contract like that this early. Because uh, you, you say Allen and Hurts because of their combination of their ability to run 
in yeah. in their passing efficiency. Yeah, yeah. Because when I think I I tend to agree with that because when I think of Mahomes, I think of him as more elusive, just hard to tackle, and he throws the ball away, or throw the ball, he finds a guy at the at last moment, mm-hmm. or just somehow scrambles for that ten yards. Yeah, but for the first down, but um. But yeah, Hertz and Allen, I mean, they are weapons as runners as well. Yeah. Especially at the goal line. Yeah. Oh, running. yeah. Especially at the goal line. Yeah, absolutely. Allen's much bigger. Um, yeah. So that, that probably gives, I would, that probably gives him the edge. Yeah. He's six, uh, six, four, six, five, and like almost 240. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, he's a tight end playing quarterback. He's, yeah. And Hertz is barely six foot tall. Yeah. But, uh, I would guess about 200 pounds, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think those two, yeah, in terms of ability to run, elusiveness combined with, uh, with passing, I think. Yeah. Well, I gotta, I gotta bring up Lamar on, 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 hmm. on both notes. I mean, uh, hey, where does he fit into that equa- equation? And B, what do you think he's thinking about his contract? Oh, For those who don't know, and it, I would imagine that just about anyone who's still listening to us right now will probably know this, but Lamar is uh, negotiating his contract with his mom as his agent. His, yeah, not having an agent, and I think, actually, this is one thing I don't know about the Hertz contract. How much of that was guaranteed? Because I think that's one reason why Lamar Jackson doesn't have a contract now. It was the highest guarantee in the history of football. Wow. Okay. So higher than Deshaun Watson. Higher than well, well. Um, or, or, actually, higher is is the wrong way of putting it because all of well, Deshaun's contracts. Okay. Yeah. Great. I. I. Yeah. You're right. I misspoke. It wasn't. It was the highest guarantee aside from Deshaun Watson. Let me bring up Jalen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh 255 uh million is the total. I, I think it can go up another 20 million if he hits certain wow. escalators. Okay. And then and it's a oh. 179 million in total guarantees. Okay. Including 110 fully guaranteed at signing and uh, by next league year meaning March 2024 um, 125 million will be fully guaranteed at that point um, and he has a no trade clause as well which I which blew my mind yeah um yeah, because that's changed in the NFL. I mean, originally you didn't trade quarterbacks, but how much of – I have to look up here how much of Watson's contract is guaranteed. Um, you're with me here, but – no, you're right. Uh, w- w- did I overlook Lamar Jackson there? I don't know that you that, overlooked uh, comparison. him. I wouldn't say you did. I mean, when you, when I look at consistent passing stats, I, I I look at Hertz and I look at Allen, and they're more impressive as passers. Also, he's in a system, or has been in a system. Obviously, there's a new offensive coordinator coming in now, um, Todd Monken from Georgia. Georgia, right. Um, so it'll, he'll be in a different system if he goes back to the Ravens. But the system that they've been running, which is basically Lamar Ball, is not putting him into position to succeed as a passer. Yeah, I mean, my my first reflex was to say Lamar is not the passer that certainly that Allen or Mahomes is, and it even hurts. But to be fair, the Ravens' receivers are not good. Yeah, he's got Mark Andrews and. Who's amazing, but he's amazing. Yes, but in terms at wide receiver for uh, a team 
for a playoff contender, they, I mean, they just don't, first of all, they don't invest much money in the wide receiver position. So, I mean, is it fair to say Lamar's not as good a passer because he just doesn't have the same talent? He's not throwing to the same talent that uh, those other quarterbacks are? Probably not fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't have a Steph Diggs. He doesn't have uh, A.J. Brown. Right. Right. I don't think he has uh, a Devonta uh, Smith or even does he even have a Gabe Davis? I'm not. Sh- I, I I don't know that he does. I know they brought in OBJ, and they totally overpaid for him. Yes, but, uh, fifteen million uh, for a guy who had two ACL tears in Coming two consecutive yeah, years. Yeah. I mean, that seems insane. Yeah, is that to appease Lamar? Same That's see, we got you some help. That's what's on the rumor mill. The yeah. rumor mill was he said he wanted he uh, he said bring me OBJ and bring me uh, a Hopkins, and we'll talk. And the Ravens apparently told him that this is rumored or apparent this rumored that they couldn't afford both. Hmm. Which I didn't makes know that. I, was, I would have said they should trade for Hopkins, but. Uh... Yeah, I want to get Hopkins first too. I mean, yeah, I don't know what the Cardinals were asking for in return, but I don't. I mean, I don't think they would have had to give up like a first or even a second. And they also, I don't think he wants to go there. I mean, if you you hear the rumor, he he wants he wants the Chiefs, he wants the Bills. Um, oh man, if he went to the Bills, oh my goodness, that'd be crazy. I I I'd, I'd be cheering. Diggs and Hopkins, oh. And I mean, him next to Cal- Travis Kelsey would be crazy. I, oh. I, I, yeah. I'd be afraid. Does and, the does that does the Chiefs? I mean, obviously they have Kelsey. I mean, they do have good. Re- well, I shouldn't say because they had Tyree Kill until mm-hmm. this past season. Let sure. me say Mahomes hasn't necessarily had top shelf receivers either especially once they traded Tyreek Hill. Well, they, they traded him a year ago. I mean, and they won the yeah. Super Bowl that year. So they I won the Super Bowl. I, so, yeah, yeah. I, Although the Chiefs, what the Chiefs had is still better than what the Ravens had. Yeah, I mean, Juju uh, and yeah. um, and Nicole Hardman. All right. But, all right. So so <laughs> put a bow on this. So sh- should we include Lamar in there? Did, did I overlook him? I think he's a step behind. Okay. I think he's I have not I've yet to see him be forced into being a pocket passer and shred a defense. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen Jalen Hurts do that. Mm-hmm. I've seen Josh Allen do that. I've seen Pat Mahomes do that. I've seen yep. Joe uh, Burrow. Burrow and Herbert. Herbert. Yeah. yeah. That top all those top shelf guys have done that. I haven't seen Lamar do that. I've seen Lamar pass for a lot of yards uh, when he's he, he's been you know booed out and sort of he's moving around and making things happen, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't trust him taking a part of defense from the pocket at least not yet. It's not that he can't. I, I just right. don't think they haven't put him, put him in the position. Yeah, we don't know. Where if he, he could. Can. We just yeah, we seen don't him know. Do it. So is he Donovan Mitchell or Luka Doncic in our uh, NBA yeah. comparison there? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. I th- I think the you read it's similar in across sports. Yeah. Well, hmm. In terms of star, if we're talking about star, no, I think he. I think as a star, he's in that category with with. And as a ah, star, he might be, okay, he might be okay. a bigger star than Josh Allen. Ooh. And I say that as a as a as a crazy Bills fan. I mean, he ooh, might be a ooh, bigger ooh. star than Josh Allen. Ooh, that is intriguing. I mean, if we're talking about straight up star power, it's Pat Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Is it still Aaron Rodgers? I mean, probably. Tom Brady. Brady's retired. Yeah, but he's st- uh, but is he st- uh, right? Yeah, you're right. He's retired. So I was gonna so say he's be- still a star, but yeah, it w- it would be, um, 
It would be Mahomes, Rodgers, and I'm just looking around the uh, around the league. <sighs> Talk about star power. Yeah, yeah. Dak. Dak, Dak is up there. He's yeah. up there, and, and and it's not because of his play. It's because he's that he's he's a really really good quarterback of the biggest brand in all of football, and he has commercials. Yeah, tons of them. Yeah, Allen's not quite there yet. He's approaching it. He's starting mm-hmm. to get you know he's got Gillette and he's 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 piling on the ads. From what I understand, he filmed a bunch. At least that's the rumor mill is that mm-hmm. he filmed a ton so far this off season. Um, I'm sure that's coming. Yeah. And Lamar's but, been an MVP in the league. So Allen actually has higher to go because if he gets all these commercials, like you say, he's going to break through even more, even higher. I think so. I yeah. think so. I think so. I think there's there's more in terms of just pure notoriety in star power. I, I, I think Allen is probably in that next group still. Probably with Hertz. Should we talk NFL draft? Or do we have time? I know we've been going on for a while here. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I, I, I think I'll, you I'll, asked a very good question when we were trading messages back and forth. Well, yeah. I mean, you're a Lions fan, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Bills fan. And my guess is your timeline, like my timeline, has been flooded with mock drafts. Absolutely. And I I seek them out, especially early on. I have tried to avoid them in the last couple of weeks. I can't stand it anymore. But at first, yeah, I want to know. I mean, Detroit's got two first-rounders. So, yeah, I'm very, very excited. But like you asked, what's the appeal? Uh, you were talking about the mock drafts? Well, I'm talking about both the NFL draft and mock drafts. I mean, what if you if you back away? I just releasing my football fandom and just speaking about this as purely media content. All right, what are we doing? We're literally <laughs> listing the possibilities of hires. Yeah, of 32 teams. Uh. I mean, part of it is just the appetite for football, right? I mean, we just can't get enough, even when they're not playing. We still love talking about it. I mean, I think the two most popular sports in this country are the NFL and college football. And the the draft is kind of the combination of the two. You know, it's affirmation that Bryce Young was the best player we saw in college football, and he will probably be. Could be the number one pick. It probably will be top two. Um, so there's that that carryover. Um, I mean, there are fans who are just college football fans or fans who are just NFL fans. So it's not like this perfect Venn diagram. Um, I understand. But, um, yeah, the appeal of it, I think part of it is – this is – I'm going to say this and it's probably not going to – say it's probably not going to come out right it's going to sound like i'm ripping people and i really don't mean to but everybody thinks they're a draft expert right or not everybody <laughs> but most people do like even and and i am not i mean I, I, so much credit goes to people who have made careers out of becoming draft experts right I, mean, right. I tip my cap i i envy them i think geez i, sh- I wish i'd have thought of that but you know, like you said your timeline, my timeline is full of people who are just armchair draft experts. Um, do we know? I mean, I like people say, yeah, you know, I watched his tape. <clears throat> I watched Tyree Wilson's tape, so I know he's going to be a, a good Ed Rusher. I mean, no, you watched his tape or you just watched his games like I did. I mean, I don't I don't claim that I watched Bryce Young's tape. I just watched Alabama every week. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think everybody thinks they're a draft expert in some way. I think that's that's a big part of the appeal. I think it's 
it's a combination of, of of that like of of thinking you're the expert and i think just the have you gone to the draft machines no where you go where you where you go to like I, like pff has one pro football focus Mm-hmm. Where where you can where they all the players who are who are listed in the draft are in there, and um and you 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 simulate the draft, and I'm okay. drafting as the Buffalo Bills, so I I am waiting to pick 27, or, or I have well, the option to trade yeah. up, <laughs> and it's 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 us it's I think it's a bunch of grown men who <laughs> you know who it's are a form of fantasy I guess huh? yeah yeah absolutely I think I think that's. <clears throat> That's certainly it. It's fantasy. Can you trade up in these draft machines? Some do. Yeah, some you can. Hmm. You can trade up, trade down. That drives me crazy in the mock drafts, though. I mean, I understand there will be trades. So you can't just go by the regular draft order. But to me, that just adds a whole other level of speculation that... now. Some people, you know, Mel Kiper or Daniel mm-hmm. Jeremiah or, or yeah. like they probably know. I mean, I'm, sh- I'm sure they've talked to people. So they think there's a strong chance that somebody could make a trade with the Cardinals at number three. Absolutely. Uh, so it's not just pulling it out of there, but to to say, okay, that, that a trade has been made or, or we're going to say the Lions trade up to three mm-hmm. unless they actually have sources or people they talk to who think that's that's going to happen. But <clears throat> I don't know why. It drives me crazy when I see trades in mock drafts because I just think, you don't know. I mean, I guess we don't know anything. We don't know who's going to be picked, et cetera. But that drives me crazy. Well, and I think the other chunk of people on the timeline, you know, just us us in fantasy land, I'm certainly in fantasy land when mm-hmm. I, whenever I indulge in this. And I do think there are people who do work hard at this. I, I, I will Oh, absolutely. Give- that's Give why I said I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm ripping people who became draft experts that I oh. mean, they know they put in the time. Absolutely. I, and, and you know, like there, there are guys that, like Joe Marino is a guy I, 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 I watch a lot. Uh, I watch, you know, I, I listen to a couple of his podcasts. He does a, a Bills podcast and he does a draft podcast. And I listen to him not all the time, but, but regularly. And, uh, there are lots of guys who who, who really do like in, it's a cottage industry of of creating this content, and I, I absolutely and it it's it it's I guess it just get, gets back to your point that, that it just be us lusting for football all the time, mm-hmm. and you want to be everyone wants to seem like they know what they're talking about. Want it wants to be smart, you know? Like oh yeah yeah I I knew. Will Anderson would drop or um, I mean, there is some drama too, just to the draft itself. Who's going to be number one. How yeah. much is Jalen Carter going to drop? I think that's mm-hmm. going to be a very compelling story. Um, especially when you have teams like Seattle and Detroit who clearly need him. Mm-hmm. He would be Jalen Carter would be a great fit for either of those two, but if they pass on him, then, then that's, Obvious, obviously, a sign that they think his character issues are a, are a major concern. Um, you know, who's going to be the guy who we thought was a low first round pick, and he's in the top ten? Or, um, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of intrigue. I know, I, <laughs> like you said, we're basically just watching people getting hired which you know there's not there's really not that much action but i mean you know espn nfl network abc they do a great job of creating that drama and giving us the storylines and uh and so forth um but yeah you you know you're ultimately i think you're right it just it is it is something to um satisfy our appetite for football when we haven't had it for four or five months I think the broadcast is something that I'd like to put a pin into it. And hopefully the next time we chat, we can talk about it okay. more because I think just to give a preview of my point of view, I think that's arguably the hardest job in sports broadcasting. Ooh, man. I would say right now, geez, can I steal that for a column? Cause that might, I, I mean, uh, please do. 
Wow. Yeah, go ahead. Do it. Um, I will give you credit. I, may, I will make sure I give you credit. That is a great point. Um, yeah, because that is a lot of time to fill. And you, you're you're spinning a lot of plates. You're, I mean, anything can happen. Trades. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just phone. three days. Yeah. A, a ton of names you don't know. That always and, amazes me when they do know, like, especially when you get, I mean, I don't know they're fed things from the truck and, and, and experts and stuff, but like, there's going to be that guy, maybe even in the first round or, or the second round, you're like, who? And they got everything on him. Mm-hmm. Cole Strange. Remember him? Yes. No one thought this guy was a first round pick and the and the Patriots picked him and he's turned out to be a pretty good player. Sean McVay and Les Snead were laughing about it. Yeah. During their press conference. Uh man, that is oh, that is a great point, James. I mean, yeah, it could be the hardest. Are you more of an NFL are you more of an ESPN or NFL network guy when you watch the draft? NFL network. Okay. Okay. Are you more of an ESPN or NFL network? I always find my. I always say I'm going to watch NFL Network, but I somehow find my way back on on ESPN. I don't know if that's because I feel like that's the broadcast more people are watching or talking about. Mm-hmm. Probably, or maybe I'm a little more familiar with their those names. But yeah, and Kuiper Kuiper's hair just can't you can't get away. You can't look away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Although, yeah, I, I I have grown to to like NFL Network as well. I mean, Daniel Jeremiah might be my favorite, yeah, draft expert. Um, yeah, yeah. When we when we circle back and talk about this, I'll, I'll have to make a note of which one I watch more. Yeah, uh, and let's uh, l- next time around, let's let's count, let's come up with the five toughest jobs in broadcasting in sports five broadcasting. Toughest jobs in broadcasting. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So Ian Castleberry, Barrett Sports Media, plug away anything you'd like. Uh, I did mention that that possum in the uh, Oakland A's uh, visitors TV booth uh, this week. That that is my column uh, at Barrett Sports Media. Um, I appreciate all the feedback we've gotten on that. I mean, it's 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 a funny topic, but it's also I think it, it's a sad commentary on on the Oakland Athletics. Um, so yeah, uh, every, every Tuesday, my column at, uh, Barrett sports media goes up. Appreciate that. Well, can't wait to have you back. We'll, uh, we'll fight and joust about who has the worst job in sports broadcasting. Oh, I can't wait. That's such a great idea, but, uh, thank you for inviting me on James. I hope I sound better this time. Oh yeah. You sound fantastic, my man. Okay. I felt bad about that when I was listening. I'm like, uh, no worries. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks all right. so much. And I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I feel much better. All right. All right. Be well. You too. Thank you.